Good morning and welcome or welcome back to another vlog. It is Monday, December 11th. Christmas is so soon, it is wild. This is my last week in Bloomington before I go back home to Florida for the holidays and we have a lot of stuff to do before I go home. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that last week I finally submitted a dissertation chapter. It was a long journey to get there and this week I'm just waiting on some feedback from my advisor. So it's weird that I'm like in this state of limbo where I don't have like much cool stuff to do, but I am gonna be working on some personal statements and essays and stuff like that as I apply for some fellowships. And of course, just have some like general housekeeping stuff to do. Speaking of which, I am in my car on my way to go to Kroger to get some ingredients to make some soup for tonight and just do like a fun little cookie decorating party with me, Megan and Joanna. Okay, just finished up at Kroger and I couldn't find fresh cranberries because I want them to make like a mocktail situation. So I'm gonna go to fresh time and if I can't find fresh ones, maybe I could find frozen ones. I didn't think to look for frozen ones at Kroger. Um, and then I need to go over to Target because my pickup order is ready just for like toothpaste, deodorant, basic stuff like that. Found the fresh cranberries at fresh time. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a grocery haul. I hope that the sound quality is okay. I started the dishwasher before I left and it's still running. So I really just got stuff to make soup and like mocktails tonight. So I think we might do a little salad with the soup. I don't know, I picked this lettuce up just cause it's already like pre-washed and I could just throw some Caesar dressing, croutons, easy. And stuff for the mocktails, I got some orange juice and I got some cranberry juice, which is why I also got those cranberries and some rosemary and Sprite. That seemed to be like the thing that all these mocktail recipes had in common. So we'll mess around with that. And we love, Megan and I love mini Sprite. So if anything, we'll drink them. Some eggs, I've been really into hard boiled eggs lately and I love happy eggs. They taste so much better, worth the money. Frosted Flakes, our hyperfixation, me and Megan. More bread for toast. This bread to bake with the soup. I love this like take and bake bread or just bake it bread, whatever, it's really easy. Thyme for the soup. A bunch of kale for the soup. This massive thing of tortellini, that's by hand in comparison because I also love tortellini. The soup doesn't call for this much, but this is just like a really good deal. So I got it. Veggie broth. Orange chicken, it's vegan, so it's not actually chicken. This is really good, easy dinner, fried rice. It was on sale. An onion, carrots for the soup, and then some diced tomatoes for the soup. Okay, I'm gonna make some cute little ice cubes for the mocktails. I'm just gonna put some cranberries, some rosemary leaves, and then some lime juice. And I think that'll be, I don't know, fun, cute. I told you guys I'm on my boiled egg kick. So, some boiled eggs, some toast for a late lunch, because somehow it's already after 2.30. Okay, it's three o'clock. I just vacuumed the living room and the rug in the kitchen and I swept. So now I need to mop, do the dishes, and I wanna like scrub around the sink and all of that. So let's see how much I can get done in the next 45 minutes or so because I have to tutor online at the writing center at four o'clock. Okay, it's 3.40, got the whole kitchen area mopped, and don't mind my puzzle that's in progress. Um, all these dishes done, and the sink and everything wiped down. Gonna pour myself a little treat to go tutor. Can never go wrong with Poppy in a little Christmas cup. Five fifty-seven. I am done tutoring. Tutoring online is always really convenient because I don't have to like drive to campus, but it's just, it's not the same. There's always like technical difficulties and it's just like clunky, but it is what it is. It was a one-time thing just because I swapped with someone. I think I mentioned that already, but I put little bows on these candles and I think that it's so cute. You know, the bow trend is everywhere on TikTok. But now that I lit the candles, I'm like, is that a fire hazard? So, mm, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. And this was also TikTok inspired. I think that's so cute. Happy 
Tuesday. It's a little before 11 o'clock. This morning I woke up, hopped on my dissertation writing group that I lead on Zoom through the writing center. Got a little bit of writing done, maybe like, I don't know, 400 words-ish for an essay for a fellowship application. It basically asked me to describe my research for a non-academic audience, which is proving to be incredibly difficult. And I'm finding myself just like texting my siblings who aren't in academia or who aren't in my field. And I'm just like, do you guys know what this phrase means? And I'm like, do you guys know what the mind-body split is? Do you know like Cartesian dualism? Is that like common knowledge? And that's how I know that I'm like so steeped in academia and I've been here for so long that I'm losing my grip on reality. Anyway, I hit like a wall with writing and was like, I just need to take a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna clean my room because it really, really needs it. This is like actually embarrassing. I did laundry like five days ago and I just haven't put it away. I haven't made my bed yet. So let's clean this up. Okay, cleaned my room, put everything away. I really need to reorganize this, but I don't really take that on right now. And I put this little shell container that I got, or like dish that I got at Goodwill in my last vlog, just here to put little like trinkets on in my nightstand. I think it's really cute. Out of the shower, I am going to blow dry my hair, but look who's sitting in my spot. Purring. Oh my gosh, she looks really big. One time someone commented and asked if she was pregnant. It's okay, Purr. We don't body shame. Can I sit there, though? She smells my leave-in conditioner. Styled my hair with all these rollers, and here is the result. I think that it's so cute, but it was a lot of work, and I don't know how long it's going to last. Lots of hairspray and texture spray in here, but we'll see. This is such a cute look. Okay, quick little outfit change. I'm wearing the matching sports bra to these leggings under my shirt. Um, and I just threw on this cardigan because it's like 50 degrees outside, so I don't want a coat, but I don't just want a t-shirt. It's also like incredibly sunny. It's like beautiful, which is also why I put the rollers in my hair because I get like the best lighting right here. And I was like, I just want to sit in the sunshine. But I am going to go to the post office. I have to mail something to my sister and I only ever mail stuff at the post office when it's like through Poshmark and I basically just show them the QR code on my, on my phone and it has a label. So I think this means I'm actually gonna have to like talk to someone to figure out like how I wanna do this. And I also need to go to Kroger once again because yesterday I only got ingredients for yesterday's dinner. I just didn't have it in me to think past one meal. But now I'm gonna get stuff for meals for the rest of the week. Okay, it is quite a bit later now, it's 6.30. I ran my errands to the post office. The line was way longer than I thought that it would be because Christmas time, the holidays, but got it mailed, went to Kroger, got everything that I needed. And tonight I'm gonna make um, like a tofu stir fry with broccoli. It's supposed to be a red pepper, but they only had green bell peppers and red onion. You make like a little stir fry sauce with tofu and rice. And we got a rice cooker, so I'm excited to try that out. And somehow I already need to unload the dishwasher again and clean the kitchen again it just it's hard to stay on top of it I feel like these days especially with like the baking cookies and all of that that we did yesterday I also tried to work a little bit more on the essay for the fellowship application and it's just hard <laughs> it's really hard to summarize your research concisely and to like make sure you're speaking to the right audience so I tried for like another 45 minutes tonight, um, but I'm just gonna get after it tomorrow morning. I just really had to clean my room this morning. It was bothering me, that was such a mess. I also have a Zoom meeting tomorrow at like 10 or 10.30 a.m. and I'm realizing that I should have done some stuff today to sort of prepare for it, but I really feel like she's gonna tell me to push off this project that I've been working on till like after Christmas break anyway, so like, I'll be shocked if she doesn't, so I'm not like too stressed. And the big news, my advisor emailed me. So I submitted my chapter uh, on Friday, and he told me that he would look at it over the weekend or early this week and give me feedback. And it's Tuesday evening and I haven't heard anything from him, but I'm not mad because I'm like, the longer he takes, the more of a break that I have. And he was like, just keeping you in the loop. A lot has been going on, um, so I'm not quite done yet, but I've started leaving comments. And unless something wild happens, you should get comments tomorrow. So that makes me really nervous because that means tomorrow I'm gonna get some feedback.
good morning happy wednesday this morning i woke up pretty early and i finished this book the wake up call by beth o'leary i've been reading that book for a while i feel like i showed it in my past like two or three vlogs i gave it 2.75 stars and it just didn't do it for me it had like a lot of tropes that i really like it centered around enemies to lovers like the sort of like mr grumpy miss sunshine trope it's a christmas time book they're trying to save this hotel from like going under because it's like old and run down and needs a lot of work it just i don't know felt boring i found myself not really wanting to pick it up and the only reason i like powered through the ending was because i had made it so far and i recently bought a thriller at a local bookstore called morgan Stearns here that i really want to get started on so i had to finish this one up so it's about 9 30 right now i have a meeting at 10 30 which i mentioned a little bit yesterday so i think i'm gonna look at some things just to sort of prep for that i have to make a qualtrics survey for it i'm obviously not going to do that in the next hour but i've never used qualtrics before so i feel like i should like pop around on that and like see if i have any specific questions and then i'll get ready and head over to campus to work at the writing center today okay ready to do this zoom call wearing this turtleneck that joanna got for me she thrifted it for a little thrift i should call it thrift mess for a little christmas thrifted gift exchanges it's really cute it's like quarter length sleeve but it's a little like tight here and i think i'm gonna get like overstimulated if i wear it all day while well, tutoring so i'll probably change before i go to the writing center hi how are you Okay, I actually went ahead, let me turn off the fan. I actually went ahead and took a quick body shower because I thought I was working at noon, but I'm actually working at one, so I have time. It's only 11.30 now. Um, and I put moisturizer on and everything, but my skin just feels so dry. So I think I'm going to lather up again with a Cicaplast that I talked about in my last vlog. And it definitely makes me feel like I am a little slime ball, but in a good way. So I don't typically like go out with this on, but I just feel like I need it. So I'm gonna put it on for when I work at the writing center and it's gonna be what it is. Threw in a quick load of laundry. Now I'm gonna tackle these dishes from last night. And then I will be on my way to the writing center. I did my makeup, just wearing a gray long sleeve, these like black wide leg, I guess they're like teacher pants, but didn't feel like wearing jeans. And then gray new balances. afternoon pick me up of poppy i thought that i might have time to get the cookie butter cold brew from duncan but cutting it close so this will have to do i also found out that this one has caffeine in it so just like okay it is like five o'clock i am back from work i had to stop at kroger the third day in a row because i needed more milk for the queso that i'm making tonight with our taco bell inspired crunch wraps and i realized i needed more chips if we are gonna eat queso we probably want some chips to go with it but this is my last day at the writing center for the semester it was really great um i love working at the writing center i had a really great semester working there i loved that for part of my hours i got to lead a dissertation writing group and vibes were just good campus was empty it doesn't quite feel like christmas time because it's not snowing and it's just like weirdly warm for december but getting ready to go home i'm getting excited to go home but i do want to share something exciting with you guys i am working with azazi for this portion of the video and they gifted me some of the prettiest dresses and i want to do a little try and haul for you guys because the quality is really good and they have really affordable dresses that would be great if you're doing any christmas holiday activities this winter break or if you are going to any festive christmas or winter weddings if you're a bridesmaid in any of these weddings this is the perfect place to get these dresses for any occasion. So first up is this blue dress. The color is absolutely beautiful. It's dusty blue and the dress is called Sight to See. It's a bodycon midi dress. I love this slit that it has on the right side. It doesn't go too high. 
and the fabric is thick enough where it like hides any of those imperfections i wouldn't feel like i have to wear shapewear under it you know on some of those really thin dresses where you're like gotta suck everything in this dress i think is so flattering i love the square neck top i love that the straps are thicker so you don't have to wear a strapless bra with it you could wear like a regular bra don't want to mess with any of that the seams all hit at the perfect places just like they should and again, I just love this color so much. I feel like this blue in wintertime is just like so pretty. It reminds me of like snowflake cookies I would like decorate as like a kid with my mom. They're just, it's such a pretty color. Next up is this full length gown. This will be a bridesmaid's dress for my sister actually. And it's the prettiest color. It's in champagne. This is the Azazi Brooke dress. I got it in a size A4, and I think that that fits me well. I'm typically a size small in most tops or dresses, and typically like between a size four or six in pants. And I love that it has built-in padding. So again, don't have to worry about a strapless bra or mess with stickies or any of that. It's one shoulder and it has this really pretty twist detail at the waist which i think is really flattering and it's also really stretchy which is great and just like the last dress this material i think is really forgiving but also like really really flattering it looks elegant feels expensive feels luxurious i think this makes like a perfect beautiful bridesmaid's dress it'll photograph well the color will look great on my sister she's a bit tanner than i am and she's blonde and i think that the champagne color is just really in right now as i'm seeing a lot of weddings that are more like neutral tone palettes and stuff like that and then last but not least is another full length dress for my other sister joy so i can insert some clips of her trying on the dress here it's called the on the guest list dress in dark emerald green it's one shoulder also sort of cinched at the waist with this really flattering slit that doesn't go too high i love the color of this this is perfect for christmas time perfect i think she's wearing it to her boyfriend's work christmas party it's perfect to wear to like a christmas eve service at church or also to be a bridesmaid in a wedding or to be a guest in a wedding which i think is what it's made for being that it's called on the guest list I think the one shoulder look is absolutely beautiful. I think it's universally flattering, looks good on everybody, and I think that it's relatively timeless as well. I feel like dresses like this will photograph well and they will also age well, so you could wear it for future holiday seasons to come. And the material on this is also really great. Feels luxurious, feels expensive feels like a really solid quality investment piece. So thank you so much to Zazi for gifting me and my sisters these beautiful dresses. I can't wait to wear them and I hope that you all are interested in buying some dresses from Azazi as well whether that's to attend a wedding to be in a wedding to go to any fun events that you have coming up be sure to use the link in my description box this is a commission link so I have a kickback for some of it and let me know in the comments which dress you are thinking of buying or dresses they come in so many different styles a huge range of inclusive sizes and again i was really impressed by the quality of these they're gonna wash well they're gonna last well over time and i'm really excited to share this with you guys so beautiful dresses be sure to check them out okay it's a little before six o'clock and it's time to make some dinner The best part about making crunch wraps is the queso. This queso is so good. I can eat my body weight in this queso. Good morning. It's a little after nine o'clock and Megan and I have an extremely exciting day planned. We are going to go to Indianapolis, which is the largest big city or like the largest city near us, I guess and we're gonna do lots of shopping we're gonna go to the mall we're gonna go to a dream super target that's in like a super rich suburb of indianapolis in carmel indiana and we are gonna go to trader joe's get a bunch of frozen stuff and the vibes are just gonna be excellent she has to do something on campus this morning first so i am gonna just like read my book a little bit and wait for her to come back 
um, and then we're gonna head out. So since I finished that Christmas book, The Wake Up Call, I am reading Local Woman Missing, which I mentioned I got at Morgan Stearns recently with Megan. I've heard really good things about this book. It's just like a thriller, but not all thrillers are alike. And this is over four stars on Goodreads, which is pretty good. It's one of those books where like you're hooked from the beginning because it has like a prologue, then like a part one, then a part two, and it seems like it's gonna have like time jumps and like alternating perspectives, all the stuff that like really keeps you hooked. And the writing is pretty good so far. So really enjoying this, definitely a page turner for the first 50 pages. And I think I'm gonna make some breakfast now. I don't think I updated you guys yesterday, but I thought that I was waiting on feedback from my advisor on my chapter draft because he said barring any surprises you'll get feedback tomorrow and he sent that on tuesday so i should get feedback yesterday which was wednesday and he emailed me at like four o'clock when i was at the writing center and was like surprise this happened uh i'm adding an extra day to the timeline so that means that i should get feedback today and that's just unfortunate because I'm the type of person who has no self-control and when grades are released, like when I was in college and grades mattered because they don't in grad school, or when, I don't know, I get like an exciting email or something, like I just can't resist and I have to like open it up and read it immediately. So I'm obviously not gonna wanna read entire feedback on a draft um, until I'm like in the right headspace and sitting down with like my laptop. So sort of like, enjoy my last day of freedom till I have to worry about it again. Obviously, I'm not gonna have all the edits made before I leave for Christmas break, which is a bit of a bummer because I leave Saturday and if he gives me feedback that I read tomorrow, there's no way I do all the edits in a day. But that's okay. I think that I will maybe do a little bit of work in the beginning of winter break, especially since I have some fellowship applications that are due in the beginning of January that I also need to work on. So it might be nice just to like go to a little coffee shop back home, escape the chaos of a really big family in a relatively small home for a few hours at a time to do some work. I don't know. I'll keep you guys updated. I'm making some protein pancakes for the long day of shopping ahead. Okay, we're ready on our journey. <laughs> First off is obviously Starbucks. Megan's checking the app now because they're out of stock of her panini that she wanted. So she said she's making a game plan. Also, the drive-thru wraps around like right that way and that's where you order. So when people park here, Megan and I are always like, are you new here? Like, you don't you don't, you don't park there. No, 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 no. Because then it just like, for example, I just had to like reverse, let people out. It's a, it's a whole thing. Nine twenty-two. We're back. We truly shopped until we dropped. Megan's exhausted. <laughs> we went to the mall. We went to Target, and we went to Trader Joe's. They just opened an Aritzia in the mall, and it was so nice. I bought a long sleeve T-shirt, and then I got some biker shorts too. But they shipped them to my house because they're out of stock. And I got some Sephora goodies, gifts for some other people. Little stocking stuffer for my mom. We got a candle from Anthropology as a gift for our neighbor because she watched Pirelli. Meg, do your sisters watch my vlogs? Oh. Okay. Megan got a gift for one of her sisters. Um, some more gifts in here. You know, Target. Target things started to go off the rails. We started to get <laughs> delusional. <laughs> But we bought some board games. In my mind, the board games were on sale, but I don't think they actually were. I made Megan get this little free people dupe coat. We got a new cutting board. I got a cute little brown hoodie. Rummy Q, which is such a fun game. I'm excited to play. Uh, oh, and these from Trader Joe's. We already have the oven preheated for pizza. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for these. One is coffee, one is chocolate, one is vanilla. And... I feel like they're gonna be so good. Good morning, happy Friday. So yesterday when we were driving, like right when we were leaving Bloomington, I got the email, the dreaded email from my advisor that he gave me feedback on my draft. I obviously didn't look at it yesterday because we got home at like 9 p.m. and I was like, no, now's not the time for this. 
Um, so I have managed to demonstrate some self-control. And it is currently Friday. I leave to go home tomorrow for winter break. So I was like, I don't know if I even want to like open this, but I think I need to at least like look at it while the writing is somewhat fresh in my mind and then decide how I'm going to tackle it, if at all, over winter break. So I woke up this morning, watched some Danielle Carolyn Vlogmas vlogs, drank my coffee, placed a little online order to Abercrombie because I got an email that there's a sale and like a notification from one of my favorite Instagram influencers that she has a discount code and I wanted some dark wash jeans. So I ordered those and now I think I'm gonna just like calm down a little bit, be in a good place mentally to look at his feedback. He also attached a video where he's screen sharing going through like all the comments and it's 22 minutes long. So that makes me think that there's quite a few comments. Okay, it's time to watch his 22 minute video. Okay, I was gonna take a shower before I did all that, but I just, I don't know. I, that's where I was losing self-control. So apologies that I look this way in this, what I assume will be a long talking clip. I gave the thumbs up in the little video that I recorded of me listening to it, because he started off by saying that he thinks this is really great and he knows that he has a lot of feedback and he doesn't want it to overwhelm me. Um, and he doesn't want me to think like, oh, I need to scrap what I have. So we love that. We love that he knows I have anxiety. Um, and I took a bunch of notes as he was talking through the video. I also love that it's a recorded video so I can go back and watch it multiple times. But he said some main things to keep in mind are that I have a lot of key terms, which I knew. And he thought about the idea of having like a glossary of key terms, which he knows is like weird for dissertation, but like could be beneficial like for me more than anything. And it's funny that he brought that up because like I had a Word document where I was like definitions of key terms. Um, so I basically was already doing it. But I was focusing on like my own key terms there, like the way I'm using embodiment and the way I'm using like embodied awareness. But he also said it's important to have these key terms because I'm moving across several dis different like disciplines or subfields. Like it's not just firmly rooted in like composition pedagogy. I also have like media production, like where I talk about A role, B role, things like that. And like once I get into the later chapters, things where I get into like really feminist principles that will be unfamiliar to some people reading this work potentially. So I really like that idea um, and that will help me as he says, control my key terms. And he also mentioned like it's tough because these terms are supposed to be slippery intentionally so that they're able to be bent and molded, but that they need to have some some core structure. And he mentioned something by Burke being casuistically stretched. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, it's been a while since I've read Burke. Uh, that has sort of been dumped from my brain a little bit, but I like that idea, that metaphor. And then the second thing that he mentioned is, since this is chapter one and a lot of it is a literature review, that the way that I'm, the text that I've chosen to talk about and the way that I explain them is good and solid and the pacing is good but i need to spend more time distinguishing between what they're saying and what i'm saying and he said i'm doing myself a disservice right now basically by saying that they've come up with all these great ideas and he's like no you're coming up with the good ideas and the way that you're coming up with those is by close reading these texts or putting them in conversation with them, one another so i need to like slow that down he also gives a metaphor of like three C's where I provide like context, content, and consideration. So I'm doing a good job providing the content and the consideration, but I need to provide more context of these things. Um, so in the chapter right now, I give a literature review. I move into a bunch of things. Oh, my memory card's gonna die. Okay, I had to delete a few clips so I had more space on the memory card, um, which sucks because I feel like I lost my train of thought. But basically right now in the chapter I have a literature review that I go through, say a bunch more stuff and then come back to that same literature review and do like a second pass and it's like, okay, here's how, so it's a literature review of multimodal composition and then I'm like, okay, let's do a second pass, a close reading to talk about how all this stuff was like always actually about embodiment. And he says that like I have a more firm grasp on talking about embodiment than I do about talking about multimodality, which makes sense to me because I feel like embodiment is my primary interest and 
looking at multimodal composition is just a way that that like allows me to talk about it in like a really grounded way so yeah I just need to provide more like contextual more like situating details and he's like don't worry about like how long the chapter gets I'm not worried about that it's as long as it needs to be which I was never worried about how long it was gonna be um so I wrote down I've done a good job with the content of others but I need to contextualize it better I need to unpack what it is they're saying and say why it's of value to my thinking I can't assume readers know this um, because he was like, as someone who works in like media studies, because he's like in digital rhetoric, he was like, this all makes sense to me. But for other people who aren't as familiar with multimodal composition and like digital media, they're confused here. So that's also just like a matter of like, I guess I didn't fully know who my audience is for this dissertation and I still don't really know. In my mind, I'm writing it for my advisor, <laughs> which isn't true, but that's how it feels. Um, and then something else he talked about was that in this second pass of the literature review, the I'm just moving chronologically and I made like a note about that like a comment when I said to him and I was like I don't like moving chronologically it's like I can it's boring to write and it's boring to read so I was like I wonder if I can make like a graphic because I'm thinking about it as like a timeline and he just ignored that comment about the graphic and he was like I think that you should just categorize this um categorically or thematically where you say okay here's like these different ways that people are talking about embodiment these people are using embodied language these people are talking about like physical bodies and senses and these people are talking about like cultural bodies or like race gender class things like that and that was like really really great advice that makes me excited and at the very end he sort of just like casually dropped this in there and i was like i wish he would have like led with this because this was like super interesting so right now the chapter starts off with like a opening anecdote of me like what goes through my mind when I'm blogging and he was like oh it might be really cool to like consistently like link back to these little anecdotes like thread them in between to sort of like link these sections together to help like unpack your thinking blah 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 and I was like what why didn't you leave with that that'd be so fun and that'd be like such like a specific grounded and like embodied way to like unpack my thinking so I don't know he said multiple times that I can um set up another meeting with him he's available this week so I need to think a little bit more about if I have specific questions for him, maybe I should do some of the revising and then get back into it. But he's always very nice and he was like, this is the most excited I've been. I see your ideas very clearly. And he was like, I know that they're in your head because you're like clearly jumping from section to section. Um, you just need to like slow it down a little bit more. And he always uses different metaphors. Sometimes it's been like a puzzle where I have all the pieces that just don't fit together. He was like, you have all the clay. And it's shaped at this point. Uh, it's just where are you putting it, basically. And yeah, I feel good. He also gave a lot of like line by line sentence level edits, which he always does. And they make me feel like a really bad writer, but that's okay. I feel like a lot of this advice was like writing advice, which makes me feel like I don't actually know how to write and like I'm unqualified to teach writing classes. But I know that's not true. It's hard to write a dissertation. Um... But I don't feel like crying, so that's good. And I'm glad he got such timely feedback. I'm glad he feels excited about it. I'm glad, he, like, at the end of the day, he's very supportive. So I'm going to take a shower, decompress a little bit. And then I think I'm just going to jump into some things. Okay, it's a lot later now. 10.30. I have my clothes set out for tomorrow. Shoes, the bag I'm bringing, and most of my suitcase packed up. I still need to put, like, my toothbrush and like face wash and stuff that I'm gonna use in the morning in there. I haven't weighed it, fingers crossed, knock on wood, <laughs> that it's under 50 pounds. To be completely honest, I did not end up getting into those revisions today. I, after I got out of the shower and just like ate lunch and chilled out for a bit, I lost a lot of the momentum, but I have a really long layover tomorrow, a five hour layover and also knock on wood fingers crossed the weather's supposed to be really bad so my flight doesn't get delayed or like worse canceled and i'm stranded in texas where my layover is um my plan is to work on it there i am familiar with that airport i know that there's like working stations and i just like really see myself just plug it in and like get into work mm -hmm. 